over the summer, I decided that I wanted to have a Swedish CSGO team because what was more legendary than organizations like Fnatic and Ninjas in Pajamas. And I saw a natural way, like I had explored the Danish market. I had a good understanding for that. I wanted to have more knowledge. I wanted to see something more. So that was the start of our Swedish CSGO adventure. Back then, it was started with Robin and Co, which were doing really, really, really well at that moment. Sadly, their journey together with us never really peaked from the stage that they were at when joining. But um, nevertheless, it was a great, great journey. And uh, but at this time, we've already learned in Team Singularity that we wanted to be a multi game title organization or brand and i remember going into the end of 2017 one of the biggest focuses was how do we make a sustainable business plan because it was still not sustainable it was just a hole and then investors throwing money in that hole with me along the way um, at the same time nobody management wise was having any salary I didn't start having a salary before September 2019. <laughs> it was uh, three and a half year where I had my grind on, I think is the best way to say it. In autumn of 2017, we started exploring options in other game titles, um, also like console gaming, mobile gaming. Like we wanted to try out our thesis and get it getting the knowledge in these very different titles than like pc gaming in general and even more immature markets than the pc gaming titles so basically we decided that as long as we could do it cheap then why not some of them we ran away from frightened and scared because basically it was so immature that even the level of communication between managers and players and teams were horrible. I think the best way to say how will you find a profitable business in esports and gaming is to look at it more as entertainment sport rather than electronic sport. That's the simplest way of, of trying to find something that will make sense for both investors, sponsors, and these kind of things. Because if you view it just as entertainment, then it's a bit easier drawing similarities to, to other areas and business industries. Because everyone understands entertainment. And I think at least for me, esports is entertainment. Like, that's why I watch it. It is hugely entertaining. Like, I've always been a soccer guy myself. But I would say ever since 2016, watching your own team kind of play in Counter-Strike, I basically lost the interest in watching regular sports. Not because I, I don't have the teams that I'm a fan of, but like, esports is so much more fast-paced. You know something is gonna happen that's gonna entertain you. 2017 ended on a high note with a lot of active teams, a lot of active players, and in general, a huge volunteer organization is, is basically how I would see it. And then of course you have had key persons and players that were getting a small compensation for what they were actually doing or providing. We were in some pretty, pretty big negotiations with a lot of different investment parties we decided heading into 2018 that we were continuing with only two of those that had piqued their interest and one of them was two Swedish guys who um, on paper had everything they should have. 2018 were going to be the year. We were operating more teams and players than we ever did. Um, I remember we went to Copenhagen Games 2018 together with two academy teams our main team our league of legends team 
our female CSGO team, uh, PUBG team, and <laughs> the Call of Duty team. I think basically we were around 48 people in total, if I'm not mistaken, Lee. Which was amazing and crazy at the same time. Four of these teams were boot camping at the Hydra eSport place, which has later become an investor into Team Singularity and a sister company or brother company, you can call it. But, um, but basically, they just opened their center. So, <laughs> and we were in various Airbnbs and it was one big mess. But uh, luckily, the female team brought back the victory feeling from 2017 which was that they won the female tournament. Tries to tap it away, but Sophia's too strong. One versus two, can Vilga hold it? She needs to, to stop this from ending and she can't get it done. Singularity are your female champions for Copenhagen Games 2018. Two to one, closing it out on cash. They went straight from being a mixed team to being the best female team ranked in the world and that was of course a huge win for us but at the same time we were running so many different teams had a wide focus on the next steps business wise which was in terms of investments uh, which were you know how are we going to get to the next level and together with the two Swedish partners we believed that we could raise the roof and that we could basically go from zero to hero overnight. But after wasting six months of negotiation back and forth and false promises, let's just say everything looked great on paper for starters. And then when it finally cut to the core and everything needed to be signed and money had to be transferred and stuff like that, somebody ran away with their tail between their legs and basically haven't heard from them ever since. Um, that was one of the biggest low points in all of this journey. That's for sure. I thought the journey would be clearer and I, I had never experienced anything like that in my life, like from any business or anything I've ever run. And basically that was not just, you know, a punch to the stomach. It was a punch to the face. And at the same time, somebody running away with your baby in a child carrier or <laughs> something like that, because that's how it felt. It felt like everything was on the right track and then somebody just wasted six months of your time which is a lot of time, um, especially in the world of esports and especially when you're a startup still. Um, so that was, that was the lowest moment in the history of the organization. Um, and basically what happened in 2000, the summer of 2018, after these investors basically um, ran away um, was that I needed to talk with all players and all teams and I think back then we were around 80 to 100 persons in the organization um, a lot of people receiving small compensations but you know it all adds up and basically we kind of had to pull the plug on the organization. At that time, we were owing a couple of the teams the salary for that month. And, um, and we promised that we would figure it out, but that they needed to give us some space and time so that we could do so. We kept everyone in the loop I basically updated around 80 people on mail every Monday. Weeks went by, month went by. We were talking with various different parties 
and a lot of these parties were also some of the parties that were involved before we actually uh, cut ties with the Swedes that uh, that wasted our time um, and basically what happened was that <laughs> I used so much time to explain why the Swedes had left the table because in the end they had not just left the table they had basically just stop calling back so in the start of Q4 2018 um, Hydra eSport came to me and kind of asked if there were possibilities for a partnership um, as clubs and it ended out that they actually decided to buy out the current partners that were in the company and then together we went out and found some other partners to take share in the company um, and in 2019 the full team were ready to move and basically we used the whole last quarter of 2018 making sure that owners agreement and all legal work in this matter were done properly and at the same time at the start of december 2018 we balanced every outstanding we had to to former teams and players um, which was <laughs> which was the best feeling um and but it was it was half a year with a serious low point During the restructuring of the company, we stayed alive by signing various Nordic talents within PUBG, Fortnite, League of Legends and Call of Duty to help represent the brand, but all without having a salary. The players joining in the period was mostly in need of proper representation to get some spotlight and assistance to develop. We kept all communication very transparent as the company was going through a rough period but all the talents and volunteer managers that stayed on board the ship truly gave me the extra mental fortitude and energy to overcome the situation in the company. We also started to sign national gaming influencers to act on requests from national activation partners, which in October 2018 sent Team Singularity and myself to USA for the first time to attend TwitchCon 2018 in San Diego. We participated both with a Danish influencers and two Danish Fortnite players that played the fall skirmish TwitchCon tournament where the team went all the way to the grand finals. In October 2018, meanwhile, we were still restructuring the company. Anthony, a CSGO player better known as Vanity, reached out in regard to his CSGO project in MDL North America, Gorilla Gang, a project he pitched to me in early spring that year but back when first pitched i already had a csgo team and weren't ready to make the shift from eu to na as the restructuring of the company was almost complete and the light in the end of the tunnel were starting to come near we decided to explore the possibility of making a temporary partnership with the gorilla gang squad so that they could represent team singularity for the rest of 2018 and targeted certain goals in the contract to have the foundation for a potential long-term partnership. We quickly came to an agreement and suddenly out of the blue, Team Singularity were on the rise again. The former Gorilla Gang team consisting of Vanity, OC, Food, Hydrex, Ryan and Mac one were the first North American team that Singularity acquired. And two weeks after the announcement of the pickup, we lifted our first trophy as the winners of the WSG 2018 USA Regionals. And therefore secured the spot as the representatives of USA at the WSG World Finals in Chongqing, China for 2019. A tournament aiming to be the Olympics for esports. In the start of December, we finally completed the restructuring of the company and balanced all creditors 
to resume operation properly. The experience of hitting the wall in the summer and being able to overcome it within the same year was a great management accomplishment and we came out on the other side as a stronger company. Luckily, we didn't have to start from the bottom again as our new North American CSGO project were making waves online and we automatically became relevant in the esports space again. In December, we traveled for Dallas to play the Mountain Dew League finals, ISEA Global Challenge and ESL Pro League relegations. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep our cool to claim an EPL spot, but we had a great time and the pleasure of demolishing Virtus Pro two times in the ASEA Global Challenge. As I were in USA anyway, then I traveled from Dallas to Las Vegas to team up with my newly acquired Danish Call of Duty team to participate in the first Call of Duty event of the season, CWL Las Vegas Open. Unfortunately, we didn't find much success at the event, but it opened a new world to me in terms of console gaming and also experiencing the Call of Duty community and the competitive event vibes. The Las Vegas event was the start of Team Singularity's rise in the Challenger scene and to one year after claim Global Rank 1 and win the biggest open Call of Duty event ever to be hosted.